week uh week nine i think right it was a week nine lots of weeks week nine or ten or eight i forgot <laughs> okay so last time i told you guys to watch a small little video by new frame plus about um squash and stretch because that's going to be that's a really big component of game animation is squash and stretch um so if you haven't watched the video i'll just go over that right now so squash and stretch is like essentially it, it's like exactly what you're thinking it is okay it's um basically uh, you squash and stretch a object in a game or like a player in a game um to like emphasize their movement and everything it's perfect to get from like pose to pose um like one one keyframe pose to another keyframe pose uh it's it's really helpful to like just accentuate movement in general and we're going to be using that little we're going to be using a little bit of that today so yeah squash and stretch cool so you could actually you could actually saw a little bit of that in my uh animation last time i did kind of rush it so it didn't look the best but if you look here you can like so basically i, I squash him down first to get that charge up then I emphasize the speed, zoom, and it goes up, and then it rotates, and then he charges up again, and he goes zoom. Now let's see if I remove the, that um, that scaling, what would happen? <laughs> so it looks pretty bad now, right? So yeah, squashing and stretching your um, your character can do a lot. Yeah. We're also gonna go through uh, like um, other animation stuff for games specifically today, but um, let's actually start, you know, making our endless render right now. Um, so I'm gonna delete this penguin guy. <laughs> I'm leaving this to ground. Um, and so basically an endless runner, if you forgot or you weren't there at the first meeting and you didn't see what it was about, um, it's essentially a, um, it's like Jetpack Joyride or a game layout. Yeah, Jetpack Joyride is a really good example of this. I need to get, uh, let, me do, let me get gameplay up. One second. Uh... Uh, a completely different game. <laughs> okay, here we go. Jetpack Joyride gameplay. Yes. Uh, <laughs> stupid ad. Okay, <laughs> and there's another ad, bro. I'm so done with YouTube nowadays. Okay, here we go. Finally, from five years ago. Yes. So. Basically, we'll be going from left to right, and it'll be endlessly looping from that area. Uh, from not, yeah, it will be endlessly looping. It'll be keep going on going, and he'll keep running and running through the laboratory. Um, and there's a there's a fun mechanic where you can press, hold down the uh, you just tap your screen, and then he'll like jump, or he'll like activate his um, he'll activate his jetpack. So. We're gonna be doing something like that, but he um the guy won't have a jetpack. He'll just be jumping, cause I, <laughs> cause I mean I could I could have made a jetpack, but uh, I think jumping is a really essential thing. Everybody should learn here before we set you up on your own individual projects. So yeah, YouTube is falling off, and nothing can replace it. And yeah, there are a few contenders out there. Nothing will be like YouTube though. Okay, so um. Before we can even make our player, let's get that art imported into our game, first of all. I want you guys to use the art that I've already made, um, just so that it'll be consistent for all of us. So go to the files um, channel in the Discord and just download each of these images, and then import them into the game, uh, into the project. And then we'll have a little quiz with you guys. <laughs> to see if you remember the import settings from last time.
So uh, I, I think I've got to download these as well. <laughs> Wait, let me download them. So yeah, to download, just click it, open in browser. Like once you once you click on the image, it'll be like an open in browser option, and then you just save the image in your browser. So yeah, to saving my images. Yeah, we're not going to be using our previous animations you guys made. That was just for that meeting, just to get used to animation. But I want it to be consistent with everybody, you know? I know you guys worked pretty hard on those. So, yeah, that's, that was cool. It was cool seeing that last time, but I want it to be consistent for everybody. Okay. So, once you have your images over here... Uh, Select them all, and then let's drag it into Unity over here. And we'll have a bunch of images. Yeah, it's in hashtag files. Or just the files channel, yeah. Okay, so once you have all those images um, in Unity, uh, we're gonna have to, you know, um, add all of those uh, import settings onto them from last time. You guys remember the how we imported stuff last time with all the settings and stuff. Um, I'll do the first one just to, uh, you kind of, yeah. It, it's a bunch of stuff, I know. So uh, I'm just gonna go through this one really quickly, um, just to get you a refresher, and then I'm gonna call on somebody to, you know, go through that same process with me. Okay, let's speed run this. Okay, here we go. So first, we're going to set it to, um, let's say, I think 16 is a good number. So we're, we're going to have to set all the next, all of the other sprites to 16 since we set this first one to 16. Because all the sprites have to be the same pixels per unit level. Uh, then we're going to make bilinear into point no filter because we don't have to filter pixel art. We only filter non-pixel art that are more like smooth lines. Um, then we're going to open up this image here with this little window. And we'll see that it's 55 times 55. And we'll basically take the, the um, greatest number here, which, I mean, they're about the same number, so that won't really matter here. But the greatest number is 55 here, so we have to make it so that we have to get a number that will encapsulate 55. So I think 64 is... Um, yeah, 64 is the best number in this scenario, since 128... Um, 128 still works, but it's, it's like it's too big. It, like, it... It works and it will work, it'll function, but we're not compressing it like we can't we're not getting the max compression out of it, you know what I'm saying? So sixty-four encapsulates fifty-five and doesn't go too low. If you made it like thirty-two, then it would become really crunchy. We don't want that. And we also set the compression down here to none. Apply that. There we go. There's a sprite if you drag it in. Okay, sixteen may be a little bit too big. How about how about thirty-two? Okay, that's a bit too small now. How about 20? 20? 20's good. Yeah, I think... Yeah, 20's still a bit too big. Okay, I, I'm, I'm just like... This is, this is the game of process. You just keep applying numbers and see what works. Okay, I think this is actually a good number. Uh, what does 30 look like? I think 30 is actually the best number here. Okay. Um, we're setting it to 30 pixels per unit. Okay, so just remember that number. Okay. Um, all right, so that that was just one. This was, this was not a multiple sprite sprite sheet, so no need to go to, into the sprite mode and make it multiple and then slice it all up. Um, we're just gonna continue to the next one, okay? Who thinks they've how blurry is it meant to look or not blurry at all? It shouldn't be blurry at all. You should be able to zoom in on it and see the piss, the, the crisp, pisp, crisp pixels, crisp pixels. Oh my god, tongue tying myself. Yeah, if it's blurry, then you're doing something wrong. Okay, who who is um who thinks they've got this? Who thinks they've got this um thing down? Anybody? I'll give it like a few seconds. Does anybody want to try their hand at it? Otherwise, I'm just gonna call on somebody randomly. Okay, I'll I'll give you guys. Oh, Adrian, you got it. All right. 
Uh, okay, Adrian. So, how should we start this? Where Where should we start here? Can you Can you unmute so we can talk? Yeah. Uh, set the pixels per unit to thirty. Exactly, because the last one was thirty. Then what do we do? Uh, go look at the image and find the maximum size or whatever. Mm, you're forgetting one step. Let's go down over here. What's what? What do we, what do we have to do here? Oh, uh. Filter mode is no filter. Or exactly. Yeah, yeah. And then let's look at the window here. It's 110. So what would we choose here? Uh, 128. Yep, exactly. Because it's slightly bigger. It's a pretty good compression. And then there's one more thing. What is it? Uh, set compression to none. Yeah, exactly. Good job, dude. All right. Apply that. And when we drag it in, uh-oh, all the sprites are in there. So we got to make it multiple now, right? So I'll go over multiple again really quickly. Um, so go to the sprite editor. Uh, to, click, to, to go to the sprite editor, just click on the sprite editor button over here. Okay? And I'll open up a small window like this. <laughs> Such a funny frame. <laughs> you, won't, you wouldn't notice it, though, because it's really fast. <laughs> No way, I forgot a step. Wait one second. I forgot we have to set the sprite mode to multiple, otherwise, we can't cut it up. Um, uh, Kunal, we'll split the meeting once the actual coding, or once we actually do like the, the jump programming, okay? Once we start the jump programming, okay? Uh, yeah, but I'm just gonna, I just want to do this image thing first in the animations, okay? Uh, yeah, you have to set it to multiple so we can actually cut it up, so we can apply that, then go back in the sprite editor, and then, yeah, we'll have the slice option available to us. So go to the slice, and for pixel art, for stuff you, you already know what the cell size is going to be, always do grid by cell size. When we do automatic, um, automatic, basically, I can show you actually right here, when we do automatic, it will slice it up to like the to the very edges of it which it, it, you know it works but the centers of each of these images are not the same so it's going to look really wacky when we put them into an animation so you want to do it by grid by cell size and the cell size is 55 by the way that's what i used yeah so you'll have it perfectly split up between all of them apply that yep and then we can open this up and then we can just drag in whatever awesome uh okay one more guy for the final one, the run. Who's up to the task? Mm, Carson? Okay. Carson, can you unmute so we can talk? What's the first step? Oh, uh, set the pixels per unit to 32. I mean, I set it for 32 for all of mine. Oh, you said 32. Can you set them all to 30? Because uh, I want it to be consistent with mine, okay? okay. Yeah, so then all to 30. Yeah, it's 30. But yeah, you got that step down. Okay, what's next? And then set the filter mode to no filter. Yeah, you got it. Good job. Okay, what's next? Uh, change the max size to 64. Mm, okay, let's see what happens when you set it to 64. So you notice how they're all crispy? Oh, now? I, 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 I'm sorry. I, I was like changing all the pixels to sixty uh, to thirty, and then I was like on the wrong. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Change it so, to two fifty six. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, two fifty six because the highest number here is one hundred sixty five, and one hundred twenty eight is lower than that. It's going to become crispy. So we'll we'll set to two hundred fifty six, even though it's a lot bigger than that one. It's the only method that'll get us to not make it crispy. Yeah. And what's the last one? Like no compression. Yeah, you got it. Awesome. Then you think you think you got the uh the sprite cell size cutting thing down? Yeah. All right. So what's the how do we make it multiple sprites out of one spreadsheet? What do you um doing? change change the sprite mode to multiple? Exactly. Then we're gonna apply that. Then what? And then go to Sprite Editor. You got it. Then what? Then slice by cell size, which is um, 
55. 55 by 55. Yep, and then apply that. And you got yourself a bunch of sprites. Good job, Carson. That was really good. Awesome. Okay, so now we got all of our sprites cut up and stuff. Does, does everybody understand this? Yeah. <laughs> Crispy chicken. It's an eagle, okay? It's an eagle, not a chicken. <laughs> you weren't here for the last 15 minutes? You just imported the images? Uh okay, um did you did you watch the last um the last uh video? Or no, you were here, right? You were here. So we we just made, we basically just um did all the import setting stuff for each of the images. So yeah. Just go through that. Charlotte will help you if you're stuck on anything, okay? Alright, let's continue. Um I'm gonna rename this to player. Uh these are actually the same exact sprites we used last year, but I'm just reusing them because they're nice sprites, right? <laughs> uh, I'm going to get... Let's get this out for the idle, so the jump zero. I think this is a pretty good idle. Uh, then let's place him right over here. I'm going to set him to... Let's see. Uh, oh yeah, let's make sure that he's flipped on the x-axis so he's actually facing the direction he's going to be running. Otherwise, he's going to be running backwards, and that would be weird. That, I mean, that would be weird, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, flip him on the x-axis uh, in the sprite renderer. So just flip him on the x-direction. Flip on the y, he'll just upside him up, like he's dinner or something. Uh, yeah, okay. So I'm about the player. Very cool, very cool. Uh, let's make some animations. Yeah, nothing crazy this time. Uh, just just um frame by frame stuff. So, let's create an animator. So that'll create an animator component as well as that animator controller object, not uh asset in our assets. So let's make the first animation. I'm gonna make it player run. Cool. You have a player run. Um, let's go down here to where the player run is. And I think it's 18 FPS, or not, not FPS, 18, oh, it is FPS, yeah, frames per second. So go to your samples and set it to 18. Uh, if you remember from last time, samples is just frames per second. That's exactly what it is. Um, you should have that open uh, like we did last time. So, yeah, just drag in all your sprites. Uh, drag them in one by one. If you drag them all, all at the same time, uh, um, I'm actually not sure. Uh, something I think it might try to make a new animation, but yeah, just do them one by one. It's already in order for you, so you can just drag them in in order. So drag them in order. It's such a funny run animation, dude. It's, it's so wacky. <laughs> it's like, how do you animate a bird running? You know, that's what I was thinking when I was writing this. Writing this when I was drawing when I was drawing this. Yeah. That's a bit slow. Let's amp it up to like 20. I think 20 is a good one. Yeah, we're setting the samples to 20, 20 frames per second. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's our player run. Um, cool. So. Let's go through the other animations as well. So let's go to our player jump. Open up that jump sheet. Go to the create a new clip. Do player jump. Let's call it player jump. Here, I think player jump is just like. Uh, I'm actually not sure. Let's let's just set it to like 30 for now for fun. We're we're, we're gonna find out sooner or later once we put all the sprites in. So just drag all the sprites in. <laughs> Someone just staring directly at you. <laughs> That's scary. And put that in. Uh, maybe a bit slower. How about 20? Yeah, I think I think 20 is actually a pretty good one to set to. Cool. Okay, uh, and finally... Um, actually, we're going to do that for the next time. So, yeah, we, we've actually done all the animations we have for now. So now we have all the animations for now done. 
we haven't added like a shooting mechanic yet, which we're going to add next time. But that's for next time. Let's actually add the jump now. But before I want to add the jump, I just want to talk about some game animation principles. Um, so in games, I think we can all agree that we want the that we want the player to do the do the action we input into our controller, um, like you know, pretty soon, like it, like exactly what happens. We want it, we want it to be very responsive, right? Uh, we want animations to be really responsive. Uh, and to do that, um, we're gonna have to actually like av avoid some basic animation. Uh, some basic animation principles like squashing and stretching. Even though I just taught you guys squashing and stretching, um, remember how I was talking about, remember how I showed that ball on the screen and the ball was kind of charging up before it was jumping? We're going to basically ignore that here and we're just going to, we're going to um, immediately go to the, uh, go, immediately go to the jumping part of it. So let me get that, that thing back up again. Where did it go? Yeah, so where is it? So we're essentially going to make it so that um, it won't, th that that little um, sort of like squash, squ kind of like you're squashing it downwards. That's not going to really happen for us. It's going to immediately go up and do that that nice um, sort of making it thinner in the air. Um, because we want it to be responsive and to, for animation to be uh, responsive, we've got to kind of avoid some of those things. Yeah, so you can kind of see here, he kind of he kind of waits a bit to jump and then he jumps but what we're going to do is we're actually going to make it just jump immediately up okay um yeah so responsive i had this really good slideshow last year I'm, i think i lost it somewhere <laughs> to be honest uh where did it go i i had like this really nice thing damn that sucks I'm I'm not sure where it went, but um, I basically made up this acronym. It was called like Q. It was Q something. Q. Uh, e yeah Q E R. It was called Q E R, and what Q E R stood for was uh, it was quick, responsive. It was quick, effective, and responsive. That's all. That's that's what you want your animations to be. Always, you always want your animations to be quick, effective, and responsive. When you want, when the player hits the X button, the um, you want them to attack immediately, right? You don't want him to wait to charge up his sword. Like, look at my camera, charge up his sword, and then just do a swing like that. You want him to immediately go, right? You don't want him to wait for that. So that's what I'm kind of saying here, right? You want to be quick. I mean, be effective. Effective. Um, what I mean by effective is, uh, just a. How do I put it? You want to have good sort of posing, right? You don't want it to be. Look at my camera again. Uh, you don't want it to be kind of flimsy, right? Like you want it to be really. You want to be able to see it from a distance. Like he's really, he's hitting it like really fast. The sword, right? You don't want it to be like kind of flimsy. Like oh, he's just. Ugh, he's just hitting it like that. You want it to be really quick, fast, and it, it's readable. You can actually see what's happening. Uh, and responsive, of course, I've been talking about this for like last five minutes, but yeah, you want it to be happening as soon as possible so there's no buildup whatsoever. Um, for more realistic games, this is not the case. Like, if, you, if you're playing like Red Dead Redemption 2, um, if if Arthur just jumps immediately, that that may look a little bit silly. But for the games we're gonna be making um, in the club, we're gonna we're gonna want to follow Q E R. I need to find that presentation somewhere. <laughs> but yeah, Q E R, follow Q E R. Quick, effective, responsive. All right. So yeah, as I said before, this might not apply to realistic games like Red Dead Redemption Two. Oh uh, yeah, we made the run animation and we made the jump animation. Jump animation is at twenty frames per second. Just do the same sort of method we did for the run animation. Okay. What was I talking about? Oh, I wanted to. Okay, last year I gave this really good example of what I mean by not responsive animation. Let me find it. Where did it go? 
So this is good animation. Like it looks very pretty, but it's not responsive. So this is this is actually a really good example of what I'm talking about. The Prince of Persia for the NES, not the new games. <laughs> so Prince of Persia for the NES, it's a it's a visually it looks really awesome for its time. Like it looks it looks crazy for its time. Like look how smooth these animations are. But the thing is, these animations aren't responsive because every time you move, you you hit the like the right the right directional key to make him move. He's gonna every time he jumps off of a platform, he's gonna take like one second. Which one second doesn't seem like a lot, but it is a lot when you want to be instant. It's gonna take a second for him to like get on the ground, pick himself back up again, walk. He's gonna have to run, and he's gonna jump on the ground. He's gonna do the same exact animation. He's gonna go on the ground, go up again. It's it just really. It's it's not responsive and doesn't it makes it not fun. Yeah. You see that every single time he falls down, he's gonna play the animation. So it's not responsive. And every time he wants to jump up there, he's gonna do like a little a little, you know, charge up and he's gonna jump. So um it's not gonna be fun for a really fast paced game that we're gonna be making here. Yeah, these animations they look awesome, right? They, like they look look how cool this looks. It's rotoscoped and everything. I love how this looks, but it doesn't play well, right? This is a really good example. It doesn't play well, but it looks great. How old is this game? Uh 1989. Yeah, pretty old. Like Mario released like four years earlier. The first the Super Mario, first Super Mario. Yeah. Crazy. Okay. Um, yeah. So that's what I want to talk about. The QER. Quick, effective, responsible. That's how... Uh, uh, responsible. Responsive. Responsive. <laughs> Your animation is not going to be responsible of anything. Uh, but yeah, we have these two animations in... Uh, I want to split now, but I see some people have some errors that need to be fixing, so I'll help them with that right now. So who has errors right now? Or oh, you're just um, finishing up the <clears throat> the sprite chopping. Um, what we can do is Ryan, you can just is like like lagging behind or has issues. We can go into voice chat and fix. Um, you want to do that? Then we might have to just do like a solo thing because you wanted to split it this time, right? Uh, I don't mind. We can split next time. Okay. Okay. Right, yeah. Help people who need help go to the help VC um, while I'm doing this, okay? That way you get a much better help. Okay. Um, people who have really small issues can go to Charlotte in the chat, though. Okay. Let's start actually making this jump code, right? We want the player to actually jump when we press a button, and we want them to do the animation as well. So let's do that. Okay. Let's add a component, a lot of script. We'll call it player jump. Because that's all the script is going to do, it's going to make him jump. Player jump, add, create, cool. Uh, it'll, it'll take a bit to load. Is this, oh, this is just Unity running. Okay. I want the whole screen. Here we go. There's the whole screen. Uh, where'd it go? Here it is. Okay, we're going to be following kind of similar steps that we did before um, for like jumping. Uh, but for like the Flappy Bird upwards movement, it's going to be kind of like that, except we're going to have to be checking the ground to actually do that upwards movement. So how do you guys think we're going to be able to check the ground? How do you guys think? What's like, how do you guys think we're going to be checking the ground for? Like with what? Give me like, using what knowledge you already know right now. Think of a method we could use to check the ground. Box colliders are touching. Hey, you're yeah, you're getting there. Yeah, yeah. The bird and the ground scratch can check color checking the ground. Yeah, well, we're gonna be checking. We're gonna be checking if the player is grounded. You got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys basically, essentially got it. Yeah. So we're gonna be checking if the player is grounded. So to do that, we need to initialize some variables first of all. So let's make it public, rigid body. Can everybody see my screen, by the way? Just to make sure. Yeah, okay, cool. Public rigid body, RB, 
a public transform called Ground Check. So we're actually getting the transform of another game object that we actually haven't really made yet. It's like a hypothetical game object for now. But we're going to be making it a bit later. Uh, a public layer mask, which is how we're going to be... We're actually going to be checking it through um, this uh, like a funny invisible circle we're going to be making through the code. But for now, it's just going to be a layer mask. Um, let's say like a jump power variable, so public float jump power. There we go. <clears throat> there we go. Uh, and then let's see. I think that's 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 good enough for now. Okay. Um, so let's go to our update function, and let's get some input. So if input does, there, does anybody remember the exact things we do it's input dot get key down key code dot and then you can pick any key you want for the to jump button i like ww w, just a nice one for me um this is just a nice thing to have I, I like w as the jump key always that's just that's just what i do <laughs> um and we're gonna be checking if it is grounded, which isn't really a thing that has happened yet, so it's going to give you an error. But we're going to be coding that a little bit later. Okay? So just type is grounded like this. Then make the uh, funny, um, funny, the, the curly brackets, they're not that funny. Okay. So then uh, we're going to get meaning that rb.velocity is last. Remember last time how we got rb.velocity to move our character up? We're going to be doing these exact same thing here. So let's um, get the RB dot velocity is equal to a new vector two uh, RB dot velocity dot X. So just the current X velocity, which is going to be zero always because it's not going to be moving left to right. We're going to be doing kind of like the, uh, remember last time how Flappy Bird, we kind of moved the background so that it kind of looks like it's going forward. We're essentially going to be doing the same thing here for the endless runner. Like, because Jetpack Joyride guy is not loading in completely new space every time he moves, okay? That, that would be crazy for a mobile game. He's staying in place, and it just looks like he's running. And then we'll get the jump power for the velocity. Save that. Make a new space under here. Uh, oop. Oops. One second. Yeah, he doesn't move. He doesn't actually like move across like the entire like because if he did, right? Like think about it hypothetically, right? If he actually did move, <laughs> yeah, if he actually did move like across the like the for like a full like thirty minutes of you playing, imagine how much like space it had to generate. Like like that'd be like sixteen thousand pixels ahead, and like the, the the game would just keep like it, it wouldn't be good. Okay. So what it actually is, is just a scrolling background, like we did for the Flappy Bird game. Uh, where did this go? I had this thing open. Here it is. Okay. Okay. So the thing about our code now is that... Oh, I'm only streaming. Hey, I, only, I only need to really stream my... Yeah. The thing about our... Uh, jump button right now is that it, it kind of it doesn't really stop him from jumping uh how is this like uh how is this how do i word this okay so essentially what's happening here is that the when we're jumping, what's happening is that um, once we hit the jump button, uh, the, the guy won't stop going in the air. He'll kind of be just constantly applying that velocity. So what we're going to be doing right now is we're going to be just capping his jump height to a certain limit. Okay? Yeah, that's a, that's a good way of explaining it. Get key up. So remember I was talking about uh, there's three different types. Like we've been using get key down this entire time, but there's two other ones: the get key, which is just you holding it, and the get key up, which is you releasing the button. So we're basically tracking 
when uh when we're jumping and then once we're and when you jump you hold the w button so once you stop jumping and when you let go it's gonna stop it's gonna start the um it's gonna start uh the player from so when you're jumping you're going up when you let go of the key it'll start going down and that, that's what this does yeah key up and you want to apply the same exact key code as the um as what you did for this one otherwise that'd be kind of weird if you had to like Press the jump key to go up, then you press another key to go down. That that'd be weird. We don't want that. And if rb dot velocity dot y, so the y aspect of the velocity is greater than zero m. So essentially, we're we're checking um, if we let go of the w key, and the the player is currently going upwards. Yeah. Because if we just did this every single time, he'd just be going down weirdly even though we're not even jumping like it, it would be kind of odd if we did it without this method because this is this is checking if it's actually going up in the first place yeah um then we're going to be doing a little bit of rb dot velocity is always this is a con this is a constant that's always happens whenever you're talking about rigid body the velocity is going to be quite in question sometimes or every time just the regular x, and then we're going to be multiplying the, the current rb.velocity.y dot dot by 0 0.5. Yeah, so that now basically make it start to go a bit more down. What if it's 0f? Um, it will it will basically immediately kind of go down. You don't want to do that, okay? Like, Because then it will it'll just look kind of weird. Yeah, so just do 0 0.5f, okay? All right. Now, another thing about jump feel, which I, I was actually gonna make a, get, um, get you to watch it, uh, get you guys to watch a video about um, today, but uh, I'll just cover it right now. Thing about jump feel is that in real life, um, when you jump, you kind of it takes uh, it takes the same amount of time for you to go up as to for the same amount of time. The same, the same amount of time you uh, take to jump up to the max height, it'll take the same exact amount of time to get back down. But that doesn't really feel good in video games. Like, for example, in the very first Mario game, what they actually did was Mario would jump up slow, more slowly than he would go down. So he, he'd actually, um, so he'd actually jump up like slow. Yeah, so he basically, he'd jump up pretty slow, but then when he comes down, he's basically kind of rocketing down. But it didn't really look like it, but if you looked at it from a uh, code perspective, it was it was kind of crazy. It was like, wow, he's how do you get fatter in the air all of a sudden? <laughs> so we're gonna be basically, basically doing that for a little bird guy here. Um, and the way we're gonna be doing that is we're actually gonna be affecting the gravity. So let's do rb dot velocity dot y is less than zero. So we're checking if it's going downwards, right? Because remember. When it goes downwards, it gets fatter. So I'm gonna set the the gravity to say rb dot gravity scale. That's how you set the gravity um, to let's say eight. And when we do anything else, it's gonna be the regular gravity, which well, I guess I'll set to five. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right, so everybody got that? Kind of fumbling over my words today. <laughs> Wait, what was that last line? Uh, I'm streaming the screen right now. No, the code. Okay, here we go. Yeah. So when he's when he's going downwards, because the the velocity is is negative, so it's less than zero. He's gonna maybe he's gonna become fatter. But any other time, he's just gonna be the regular um gravity scale, which will make five in the scene soon. Not now, but soon. All right, let's actually make that ground check now, okay? Because that's been we've been waiting to make the ground check for a while, and this is actually going to be making a, a sort of a new function, but it's not really a function. We're we're going to be covering making new functions like literally in this meeting, um, but. Basically, doing here is we're just setting up what the uh, what is ground is going to be equal to. Okay, so it's kind of like a function, but for uh, 
Mm. F- forgot me doing cover functions. Um. So you know how update is kind of like it has a void and then an update here. This is this is basically one function. This is also a function. I think you guys kind of inferred that by now. So what we're doing is we're actually going to be making another function, which is going to be it's going to be taking in. So these take void, which means it doesn't really take in a value. It doesn't have to return any sort of value specifically. But when we make this um, when we make this bool, we have to return a bool value. And remember, bool is the true or false value, which is which makes sense for is grounded because we're going to be we're basically going to be checking if it's true or false if we're on the ground. Yeah. Yeah, so that, that's like the, the kind of a messy explanation. Not messy, but like it's it's pretty concise. I think there's there's more to function than meets the eyes, but for now that's good enough. Right? Yeah. So and you can also see once we've made this public bool, you'd see that this actually turned red. Because what we're doing here is we're actually referencing this is grounded up here. Right? So what we're doing is we're basically setting up what the value of is grounded is here, but we're check we're um uh, we're basically referencing it over here. So every time, we, um so basically uh, like think of it. Remember how the update function, uh, is called once per frame, as it says up here. So every frame is going to be checking if we hit that key, and the if is grounded is true. It's like oh, what is grounded? Oh, it's referencing me to this function down here. Let me run this function right now, over here to see if this is true. So that's basically what's happening every single time. Yeah, functions are great for um, keeping your code really concise. So you don't have to repeat the same thing over and over again. Yeah, so what I'm typing here is uh, is some code we, we don't really regularly use. Like This is a code I've used once in my life just for this thing specifically. But basically what this is doing is it's creating like a, a tiny little... Um, Invisible circle at the invisible circle at the um, ground poset ground check position point, which remember what ground check was? It was our transform up here. So we make that ground check transform. What it will do is it will create a small invisible circle at this position. The radius will be zero point two f, uh, and then the ground layer is what we're checking um, for it to. Oh, why is this not working? It's kind of weird. Uh, did I use the wrong one? Oh, I use overlap area. So done. Okay, yeah, overlap circle. <laughs> okay. I I could, I could think about it for a second. Okay, yeah, it's overlap circle. Yeah, see, this this is how you know I don't use it this much because I, I literally forgot what it was. Yeah, it's return physics two D. So we're getting the two D physics overlap circle. So it creates a it basically creates a um invisible circle at this position with this radius and it's checking for the ground layer. So save that up and that's that's all we have to do for our base jump code. So save that. Go back into Unity, and let's let's assign a bunch of variables. How fun! <laughs> My favorite activity, honestly. Okay, it's gonna stay for a bit. Yeah, the one thing when I do the work, and I should just do a little bit of extra work. <laughs> okay, um, first of all, let's make a box collider and a rigid body on this guy, because I mean we need to. You didn't make a ground. Oops. Oh yeah, wait. Oh yeah, I forgot. I made a ground for the animation earlier. Yeah, you guys have to make a ground, by the way. Yeah, I, I didn't actually assign anything to this. Yeah, that good, good catch. I totally forgot about this. Yeah, probably need to make a ground with a functional colliding area. <laughs> so make so uh get just just, uh, just assign a box collider two D. That should be about it. That's all you really need for that. Um, go back here. Let's assign a box collider to this guy as well. Uh, don't make it is trigger by the way. Keep it as regular because you know we want to we want physical um, colliding with the ground here. Yeah. Save that. Mm -hmm. Actually, wait. This is, he's a bit too tall. Okay. How about this? This looks good. I like this box. 
His tail isn't accounted for, but it's fine. Cause, cause it's fine because uh, all the enemies will be coming in from over here, not from over here. So it's fine if we don't account for the tail for now. Uh, but box player 2D. Um, let's get the rigid body out. Rigid body 2D. Remember, everything is 2D because we're working in 2D. Uh, freeze the rotation on the Z axis because. Okay, let's say like a huge cannonball is barreling towards the eagle, and gets he gets hit. He's gonna start if, if um he starts hit that that is a physics based rotation, right? Because the guy physically collided with the eagle to then um move him. So what we're doing here is we're actually freezing the uh um we're basically uh, freezing the z rotation because remember the z rotation is how we move it like this. Uh, and we're basically freezing the Z rotation so that uh, it doesn't move when it does that. Because if it does, there's no way to actually get it back to the regular rotation, and then you won't be able to jump anymore. It'll be kind of weird. Even though it looks kind of funny, it's not going to be good for the player. Mm. We did do an experiment like that before when we were covering rigid bodies first, right? Uh... Gravity scale. Okay, yeah. Remember how we set the gravity scale back in our... Oh, I'm not streaming my entire screen. Uh, okay, here we go. Yeah. Yeah, remember how we set the gravity scale to 5 over here as the regular? So we're going to have to set this back here to 5 as well. So let's go over here. Set this to 5. Mm, okay, let's go assign the rest of the variables now. Oh, or assign all the variables because we were just making the stuff. Yeah, let's go over here. Assign the rigid body. Remember, uh, a really easy way to assign a rigid body or anything that's, that has a single component on a game object is to just drag in that game object from the hierarchy into that place, and it'll just find it for you. Cool. Yeah, so just to do that again, because I know a lot of people get kind of stuck on this. Go into the hierarchy, drag in your player, and then move it into there. So, oh crap! It's five twenty-two. Oh, we got. I gotta wrap this up soon. Uh, ground. Oh yeah, we gotta make a ground check, right? Because there's no ground check right now. So let's create a new game object. So go to your hierarchy, create an empty. Uh, make it zero zero zero, especially for the Z because um, we don't want the Z to be in another three D dimension. Because <laughs> we know we know all the troubles that happens when the Z axis isn't zero, right? Make it zero. Um, set it like right between his feet, like maybe a little bit lower. Um, if you want to have a better visibility, what you can do is just go up to this little box icon over here. Just click like the red, the red. Kind of shape is this like a, a softened rectangle <laughs> and then you'll have a nice little uh you know thing here saying what this is i'm gonna call this ground check so i did not spell that okay there we go uh yeah so keep it like right below his feet like right below his feet over there okay bro you missed one <laughs> semicolon dude yeah, when you when when you're starting out, stuff like that will get you. Don't worry, it's not. A, it won't become a recurring issue for your entire life. <laughs> okay. Now we have our ground check. Let's actually place it inside of our player as a child, so the ground check is not a child of the parent uh, player object. Um, and we do this because we want the ground check to move with the player, right? So when we move the player, the ground check will move with it, so that it'll always check the ground. Otherwise, the ground check is always going to be placed on the ground, and then it'll just the player will just be able to jump all the time. It'd be weird. Can you make ground check again? Uh, it's just like an empty game object, uh, and then I I added like this little icon here, and then I moved it in there, and then made it a jump. Yeah. Yeah, if you need help, go to the VC. Okay, yeah, then we can actually set up this ground check object into here. There we go, we got the transform of that. 
Okay, let's make a ground layer. Now we're going to be actually covering layers. So layers um, are kind of they're kind of like a weird feature in Unity because they aren't actually used that much. So honestly, they're they're used for like three specific things that are used regularly. I feel like we could have used layers a lot more in Unity, but I guess not. <laughs> so one of the things Unity's, um, Unity's layers are used for is to assign um, basically what can collide with what inside of a um, inside inside of the scripts. So if I assign like a layer. I can basically make a thing called like ignore layer collision. It's like another example. It's not what it's not what we're going to be doing here, but I can make like a thing like oh, if this guy has layer five and this guy's layer three, layer five and three cannot interact, so they don't interact. Like something like that, which which I feel like could be done with like tags. It it layer just feels like another tag. It's it's kind of odd, but yeah, that's what layers layers are just another type of tag to be honest. Um. Yeah, so to make another layer, we're going to be making a ground layer right now. So select your ground, go to the layer, uh, select that, and go to add layer on the default. Or click default and include add layer. Wait, did we make a ground? Yeah, I made a ground last time, and I, I forgot. Uh, like, like I didn't tell people I made ground last time, but I made a ground. and then Yeah, ground is literally just a box collider and a large rectangle. So yeah, that, that's all you need to add for the ground. Yeah, okay. Let me go back to making layers. The exact same way you make tags, you make layers. So go to add layer, and then go to here, and then just type in ground. And then remember, exactly like tags, um, layers don't, they, they don't apply once you click the, the game object that you click to make the layer, doesn't immediately apply onto it. So you have to go back and actually add the ground layer. Um, it's kind of weird. I, I wish they didn't do that. But uh, I've learned to live with it. So that, that has caused me a lot of issues in the past. I think I've told you guys about that. Then we have to go back to our player object and then assign the ground layer uh, to the ground layer area. And I'll make the jump height like five, not height, jump power like five or something. That seems good. Let's see if this works. I'm not really sure. I think this will work. So if I press W, Oh, he jumps, just very smallly. Oh, I see what's uh, this ground. This main camera is still there. Yeah, that was that was from last time. Don't worry about that. The ground it's working, but like the the power is very low. So I'll make it like sixteen. Hey, look at that! It's working. And you're actually you're actually seeing it here, right? That it, it extends slowly and then it goes down really fast. Exactly like, like the original Mario and it and many different other platformers. Um, you can have all sorts of types of jumps and platformers. I'm I'm actually link a video by GMTK about that. Like there's just all sorts of jumps and like you can have floaty jumps. You can have like crazy. Like, there's a bunch of terminology for it. It's a really fascinating topic, just jumping in video games. Uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll link a video about that. But this is my favorite type of jump, so we're doing that. Okay, but something is off here. What do you guys think is off here? What's wacky about this? When I press the jump key, what is what is wrong? What is what is missing? No jump animation. Yeah, we didn't make it. We didn't add the jump. We I made a jump animation, but it's not jumping, right? We actually have, have to assign that jump animation in there. So the way we're gonna do this is that um, we're gonna be checking in our code if the player is not grounded, and if it's not grounded, um, then we're going to be uh, playing the jump animation on a loop. So that's what we're going to be basically doing. Essentially, that's the logic of it. So let's actually implement that. And to implement, uh, we're, we're probably... Can you guys stay like uh, 10 more minutes? Is that okay? Because I, I really want to finish this right now just to show you guys how to do animations inside the code. It won't take that long, trust me. Okay. Hope If you, if you, if you really do have to go like right now, then I don't blame you because I am going off uh time a bit right now okay yeah so inside of the animator we can actually assign these things called parameters 
Uh, so let's go over here. Um, the, to go to the parameters, you just go to this little thing in the top left of your animator window. Go to parameters. There'll be an empty list there. Um, and yeah, basically what parameters do is it, it's, it gives us a set of um, set of like triggers and other sort of things that we can check to trigger animations. Even though trigger is one of the triggers, but it, why would they name a trigger again? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's the best way to explain it. They're basically um, all sorts of different types of triggers to trigger animations. So we have floats, ints, bools, and triggers to trigger animations. Um, so float, what float could be is basically like um, if if like the if a certain um, variable in a script hits this float, play the animation, or something like that. But we won't be we won't be messing with float or trigger today. We're only going to be messing with bool today because we're going to be checking if it's if it is not grounded or not. If it is grounded or not, why why did I say it like that? If it's grounded or not, and that's a boolean sort of statement, right? Um, so we'll, we'll be covering this with bool. So I made a new boolean parameter. Double click it to rename it. I'm going to rename it to is grounded, which is not to be confused with the is grounded here. That that does that doesn't immediately connect. We have to actually we have to actually go into the script and connect it. See so yeah, that they they just name the same thing because it's convenient. Or you know, I'm I'm an is grounded animator, or is grounded in parentheses animator. Just to make it clear to you guys, these are not the same things. Okay, and let's make some transition arrows like we did last time. So we're gonna make a transition from player run to player jump. Click that transition arrow, um, and we're gonna be actually making the settings a little bit different this time. What do we make? We make a transition arrow. So the way we do that is we right click on one on one of the states, make a transition, and then go click on the next state you want to go to. Like before that. Oh, to make a boolean inside of the um, animator, just go to the plus button over here, and then click a bool. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I actually stated that out loud. Yeah. Click the plus and then click bool. Okay. Click on your animator, uh, or your transition little line here. And um, yeah, we're actually gonna making a, a few different settings this time, like different from last time, because we're, we're actually going to be making a trigger now that goes between the two. So we're not going to be just doing, you know, just regular transitions once the animation is finished. Both of these are looping. So we actually have to have a trigger between them to actually make them go between each other. Because if they're looping, they're just going to keep looping in the same one. It's not going to work. Uh, so first of all, we'll remove has exit time because it's we're going to be adding a trigger, which will kind of work as the has exit time. Uh, and then we're going to make the transition duration zero. So basically, turning off has exit time and the transition duration, make them both zero. Uh, make the, turn this one off and make this zero. Yeah, you want to turn this one off. You don't you you don't even want it to be zero. You want to turn it off, okay? And make the transition duration zero, okay? And then let's go back to the, let's go to the conditions. This is a new thing right now. The conditions, and we're going to push the plus button. And since the only parameter we have in right now is that is grounded, uh, it already it, it kind of works. It already puts it in for us. So yeah. So basically, and it's already set the condition to be correct. So yeah, we have the we have a true or false value you can put here. So essentially, what is happening here is, okay, I start up my game. The players in the run state. All right, it keeps looping in the run state, keeps looping in the run state. But if the is grounded animator is true, it's going to transition to this one. Make sense? And it's going to keep looping here. So now we actually need a way back, right? And the way back is by making it false. So let's make it, let's have make, let's, let's make the exit time zero again, or just turn it off and make the transition duration zero. So this is off. Transition duration is zero. And it's plus, and then we're gonna make this false. So make sure to make, make sure to double check it, make sure you got everything right. Exit time is off, transition duration is zero. And this is this is the player run going to the jump. So the jump, so um Oh wait, wait, wait. Oh my god, wait, I got my logic messed up. Wait, okay, yeah, see, this, this is why we double check, right? I actually got my logic messed up because 
Um, we don't want to transition to the player jump if it is grounded. We want the, we want it to be off the ground to transition to the player jump. So this is actually going to be false. Yeah? Yo, I got that messed up. Okay, yeah. So we want this to actually be false um, um, when we transition to player jump because it has to be off the ground, right? Yeah. And then when we go back, we have to be the jump has to be true. Or the, the, is, the is ground has to be true so that when we're going back. So yeah, it it goes to the player jump when it's false, and then goes back down. It goes back to the run when it's true when it is grounded. Okay, that makes sense now. That was a little bit silly of me. Uh, yeah, these two are okay. Just no transition duration or exit time because this will do it for us. Cool. Okay, we got everything in the animator set up. Let's go back to our script, and uh. We're going to be getting the animator component because when we make an animation on a game object, it makes an animator component. So we're just going to be getting that animator component right now by doing a public animator and then cool. Oh, I forgot to I removed the semicolon on this back. So, okay. Um, and then uh, we're going to be going back here and one second. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna be back. We're gonna go be going back into our update function. And we're gonna be setting the anim dot set bool. This is a new function. Set bool. So basically setting setting the boolean of a boolean in this in this script to a boolean in the animator. And we're we're, we're gonna we're gonna be writing up the name of that boolean. So let's go back in our, into the Unity and just copy that exactly. And then we're going to do comma, and we're going to do not is grounded. Or not, we're, we're going to be doing regular is grounded, sorry. Is grounded, yeah. Not is grounded as if we did the, that mistake I did earlier. Yeah. And that's all we have to do for the animation. So save that. And essentially what this is doing is it's setting the Boolean value of what's in the animator to what's happening in our script right now. So is grounded animator is now set to is grounded in our script. It's, you guys understand? So remember how I was saying that they're not the same? Now they are the same because we set that um, piece of code to make them the same. I said same a lot. Okay. Save that. Go back here. <clears throat> Go back to the game. And then it should be playing the animation. Let's pray. Please. Please. Oh, no. Oh, I forgot. Wait. That makes sense because uh, I not I didn't set the animator in the uh, in the inspectors. So, yeah, so set the animator in the inspector to do that. Just drag the player into there and get the animator from the player. Now it should work. It's running, and when it jumps, it works. Look at that. So now he's he's doing a little twirl when he's jumping. Awesome. Very cool. Okay. Yeah. So that. Yep. That is all we're gonna be doing today. So next time we're gonna be doing a bit of squash and stretch on that jump because it looks kind of lifeless right now. Um, and we're gonna be adding the shooting mechanics. And then the next time we're gonna be adding enemies, but next, yeah, next time is gonna be shooting and squash and stretch. Very cool. Um, yeah, a little bit over time, but that's okay. Um, yeah, if if you guys are complete, uh, completed all of this and there are no errors, you guys are free to leave. See you guys next week. <clears throat> Not the voice crack on the last thing. Okay, yeah, see you guys next week. Uh, people who have errors. Let